Good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Wednesday the 7th of September and I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. Do put something in the chat if you'd like to. As always, we follow um, the order of service written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of today's Bible readings and a reflection on the reading. And on a Wednesday, the theme for our prayers is the Holy Spirit. And so we pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The Spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord of life, come wind of heaven, come flame of love, come giver of all gifts, come and fill us. And the psalm on a Wednesday is Psalm 139. The Spirit of God is in all the world. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvellously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. The Spirit of God is in all the world. And this morning we pick up uh, the reading from the book of Acts. We pick up where we left off yesterday in Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 19. Um, and we were reading yesterday about the amazing conversion of Saul, and we pick up uh, after that. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't he the man who caused havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Another amazing passage. So let me read you a reflection. And this week they're written by the Reverend Rachel Mann. And she says this. There is something both charming and stunning about the way Paul moves so quickly from persecutor to evangelist. This shift is a testimony to the converting power of God. Paul's behaviour reminds me of my own conversion experience in my 20s. At the time I was teaching and studying in a secular philosophy department. I recall a stand-up row I had in public one lunchtime with one of my best friends as I sought to tell him about why I'd gone from unbeliever to a follower of Jesus. I was desperate for him to know the power of the risen Christ in his life too. Ultimately, it was a fracture in a friendship which eventually broke down for years and has never been the same. This passage from Acts presents Paul as someone who confounds and enrages his audience so much 
that he has to be smuggled out of Damascus in a basket. Decades on from my conversion experience, I can see that how we share the good news is nearly as important as the good news itself. If it cannot be heard because we are bumptious or in your face, I'm not sure we should speak. On reflection, I can see that my argument with my friend was not my finest hour. I was like a teenager who wanted to tell my friend about this amazing person with whom I'd just fallen in love and who insisted that my friend loved them too. I wrote to my friend's years, friend years later, apologising for behaving like a teenager. But I did not apologise for my faith and trust in the author of the universe. That's a good point, isn't it? The message is so important, but how we share it is equally as important so that it can be heard. And so we turn to prayer, beginning with the, the collect, the special prayer for this week. God of constant mercy, who sent your son to save us, remind us of your goodness. Increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer. On all who are dispirited and dejected, on all who've lost hope or joy, on all who were unable to cope, on all who are weak and heavy burdened, on all who are fearful and anxious, on all who are lost or have strayed, on all who are helpless and powerless, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos, Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless, Holy Spirit, making strong the weak, Holy Spirit, guiding all who venture, Holy Spirit, filling all things, come renew the face of the earth. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The strength of God guide us, the power of God, preserve us, the wisdom of God, instruct us, the Spirit of God be within us today and evermore. So may God the Father bless us, may Christ the Son take care of us, may the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our lives. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for prayer today and uh, I'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Just a reminder too that today there's a service in church at 11 o'clock, a simple service of Holy Communion, and tomorrow as well as morning prayer online, there is morning prayer in church at 9am. So lots of choices to join me, but I hope you have a great day. Until then, take care. God bless. Bye for now. <laughs>